good day everyone so for today's experiment we will perform experiment 8 liquid pressure the objective of this experiment is to determine how liquid pressure varies with the following first is the depth of the liquid second the direction taken in the liquid is either left right or down letter C the density of liquid so we will use here water glycerin and kerosene and letter D we will also investigate the liquid pressure versus the cross section of the containing vessel in which there is a big container and a small container now before we proceed to the experiment let's discuss what is a fluid now fluid is any substance that flows and offers little resistance to change it, its shape and generally fluids can be liquid or a gas so in fluid mechanics we can discuss fluid statics and fluid dynamics for fluid statics it is a part of fluid mechanics that deals with the fluid when there is no relative motion between the fluid particles or the fluid is at rest while for fluid dynamics it is a part of fluid mechanics in which the fluid is in motion so we are dealing with the moving fluids now for this experiment we will determine the property of a fluid if it is at rest since the title of this experiment is liquid pressure let's define first what is pressure now pressure generally refers to the force acting perpendicularly to an area so that is p represents for the symbol for pressure is equal to the force divided by its area so here you can see the blue arrow here which is represents for the force and this solid cube here represents our object so we will have the area of this in which the force is applied so if we will get force divided by area we will get the pressure that is applied on this area and the unit of that since the unit of force is newton and the unit of area is squared meter so the unit of pressure is newton per meter squared or we can use pascal or pa for its unit now to further investigate liquid pressure we need this three uh, formula for our discussion so first we have to know that the cube has a mass so therefore there is a weight and the formula for the weight is mass times the acceleration due to gravity so that is gravitational force or the weight is equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity so note the mass here is in kilogram and the acceleration due to gravity is meter per second squared another formula we have to note is the formula for the mass density so here mass density is equal to the mass divided by its volume and the unit of density is kilogram per cubic meter while for a cube which is here which has an area of a here so that is length times width which is equal to area and with a an height of h so if we will get the volume of this object we can say that volume is just equal to the area times its height or the length times width times height so what if from this solid cube we will replace this with water just like this so here by doing this we can now investigate what will be the formula of liquid pressure so instead of this one is a solid so here the cube now is made of water so from the formula in which p so this time this is liquid pressure is equal to the weight of the water divided by the area and we know weight can be computed as mass times the acceleration due to gravity so we will substitute the formula of weight so it will be just like this so liquid pressure now would be mass times acceleration due to gravity divided by its area and from the formula of our mass density in which mass divided by volume we can replace mass here so if we will derive this one mass can be computed as density times its volume so we will substitute now our formula for mass here it will be 
just like this. So, our liquid pressure now will be density times volume times the acceleration due to gravity divided by its area. But we know that this cube has a volume of area times its height. And we can replace here the formula of volume. And therefore, if we will do that, the formula of liquid pressure now will be density times the acceleration due to gravity times area times height divided by area. And we can cancel out area here. And finally, the formula now for liquid pressure in which we will consider the mass density of the liquid, the acceleration due to gravity, and its height. So now, the height here is the depth of the object. And this is now the formula of our liquid pressure. So it's either we will use liquid pressure is equal to the weight of the water divided by its area or we can use as mass density times the acceleration due to gravity times its depth. So we can now define as liquid pressure also called the hydrostatic pressure refers to the pressure exerted by a fluid at any point in space within that fluid. And for this experiment, we will use an instrument that is, is used to measure and to indicate pressure and that is what we call manometer. Now this is the simplest form of manometer in which it consists of a U-shaped glass tube containing a liquid. So in this instrument that we're going to use, it just contains a colored water. So the idea here is for this manometer, it uses the surface area and the weight of the column of the liquid to both measure and indicate the pressure. So, how to use a manometer? So here, we will connect the other end of the manometer to the liquid we are measuring and the other one, it is open and the only pressure that is applied here is the atmospheric pressure. So first, when both tubes open the liquid here is balanced or it has at the same height but once we put our tube inside the liquid it's either we dip it down the liquid so the liquid here will move and we will get the difference of the height of our liquid so to do that all we have to do we will just have reference so the bottom will be our point o this one the height of our liquid which is connected to our tube or to our liquid that is point q and the height of our liquid in which which is open or affected by an atmospheric pressure it's now our point p now the absolute difference of point o to q we will get that one so that is always positive and for here so in this the height now of our point o to point p is the absolute of OP. Now, after we get the difference of that, we will now get the height. So, to determine the height, we will just get the difference. So, it means it's just the absolute height of OP minus the absolute height of OQ. So, do not worry if the ruler didn't start from the bottom of the tube since what is important here is to get the height from these two distances and that is just absolute of OP minus OQ. So, we expect that the difference of this is always positive. So, let's try to solve an example to get what will be the pressure using a manometer. So here, pressure is just equal to the density times its acceleration due to gravity times its height from its manometer. So the given R, so we have to note that the mass density of the water is equal to 1000 kilogram per cubic meter. And the value of the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meter per second squared. From the reading in our manometer, the height there or the difference of OP minus OQ, so that is OP is 12.5 cm, so that is, let's say that is 12.5, and OQ is 1 cm, so the difference of that is 11.5 cm, which is the depth of our liquid. And 
if we will multiply the 3, the answer will be equal to 1,127 pascal or kilogram per meter second squared. Now, let's proceed to our experiment. So, the first thing we have to investigate is what will happen to the liquid pressure versus its depth. So, first, we will determine first the depth. Now, the depth is measured from the surface of the liquid going down to the water. So, first, that is zero, so that is the level of the water. 3 cm, so that is the distance from the surface going to uh, 3 cm, 6 and 9. So, using a manometer, you will read what is the reading of OP in cm, OQ in cm, and you will get the difference of OP minus OQ. And you will also going to graph this one, so that is OP minus OQ versus depth. So, in graphing, you have to know this is y-axis versus x-axis. So, so the OPOQ will be here and the depth will be on this side. So, that will be in CM and this is for OP and OQ. So, let's say your scale here is 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. So, it depends. Okay, You have to adjust it based on the value of your OP and OQ. Now, for procedure B, we will investigate how liquid pressure differs with the direction of the probe of our manometer. So here we have the probe down. So this is for probe down, probe to the right, and probe to the left. Now, your data on table A, you will just copy it here because that procedure is done when probe is going down. So what you're going to do is to investigate now what will happen if the probe is turn to the right or turn to the left and you also have to record this OP, OQ and you have to get the difference of their OP and OQ from 0 cm, 3 cm, 6 cm and 9 cm. And again, you will graph this data. So for this graph, we will just use one graph but we will graph your data on three tables. So first, let's say this is probe down so this graph shows the the value of op minus of q versus depth of the probe down and we will use another color for probe to the left so let's say it's like this one and another one is probe to the right so this is how will you graph for procedure c we will investigate the liquid pressure versus the density of the liquid. So again, you will copy your data for the water on table A and you will investigate what will be the OP and the OQ if the liquid is kerosene at zero depth, 3, 6, and 9, and the same with glycerin. And using this, we will also graph our data, so the same we will use three graph and for three colors. For example, this is water, this is glycerin, and this is kerosene. Now, so to better understand the relationship of liquid pressure to density, you will choose one depth only. It's either three, six, or nine, so it's up to you which one are you going to choose, and you will the single data for water, for example, this is the data for water, so that is 2. And for the data at 3 cm of kerosene, let's say this one, let's just say this one. And for glycerin, so let's say this one. So from here, you will analyze how liquid pressure varies with its density. And lastly, the last procedure is you will investigate how liquid pressure varies with the size of the container. So again, you will copy your data on table A because for that procedure, we are using a small version of this container. So here, we will investigate the same procedure in which that is probed down, but this time, uh, we will use a bigger container. So hence, you will get again the OP, the OQ, and the difference of OP, OQ at 0 cm, 
3, 6, and 9. And the same, we will graph our data. So in this case, I will see two data here. So for example, this is for small container. And for example, this is a big container. And you will analyze your data based on this graph. So after that, please complete your lab reports. So this is from 103. to 109 and of course do not forget to write your conclusion in which you will determine what are the factors that affects liquid pressure.